Welcome to the Effective Living series. It's your springboard for success for the year 2022. And this year we are coming to you on the City Breakfast Show on radio and Breakfast Daily on television. My name is Bernard Avle. We've divided the week into four, the month into four. First week we're focusing on rebuilding personally. Indeed, the theme for the series is building back greater. And the first week will be focused on you personally. The next week will be on rebuilding families. The third week will be on professional rebuilding and finally on business. The first topic this uh, series is on mastering your emotions during turbulence. We all agree that these have been very turbulent times. And my guest is one of our blue chip guests. She's been on a few years. She's a CEO of Busara Africa, which is a Pan-African leadership development firm. She's a leadership trainer, a certified coach, a facilitator, a speaker, an OD specialist with over two decades experience working in various fields. She's also released a new book we'll talk about at the end, which features some of the things she said on previous programs as well. So Taka, worry, good to have you. Wonderful to be here. Happy New Year. Many, many happy returns. Happy New Year to you too. How are you Thank doing? Thank you. I am well. I'm well. Excited for the New Year. When is the book coming out? So the book should be launched in the first quarter wow. of this year. And you know you're featured. I know. So watch this space. Watch <laughs> this space. I'm in the book. I'm in the book. We'll talk about the book later. Okay. I'll give you a whole interview. Sure. I want to talk about emotional resilience in turbulent times. Since you are the first speaker for the series, just give us a context. How turbulent have these past, I don't know, one and a half years been? Mm. Mm. So Bernard, do you remember when you would hear this particular statement? Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Mm. We are now crossing a zone mm -hmm. of turbulence. Okay. Please return to your seats and keep your seatbelts fastened. Do you remember those times? In the times? plane. In the plane, because yes. many of us are not flying as we did. Eh? Mm. But that captures really the essence mm. of the times we are going through. Wow. 2020 was turbulent. Mm -hmm. 2021, as we've all seen, was equally turbulent. Mm. And one of the things I'm afraid we need to prepare ourselves for mm. is that 2022 might be a lot more of the same. Hmm? Now, there will be moments, Bernard, mm. where, like as we're flying, you'll be free and clear. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, there's this kind of shaking. Eh? And in those moments, you need to take a seat and fasten your seatbelt. Mm. Now, notice, Bernard, there are two types of people. Huh? When you start to go through turbulence, eh? mm -hmm. you'll notice that there are some of them who start to, like, all of a sudden hold on. Eh? Mm. And then there are some who actually, like me, annoyingly enough, I lean back, mm. I relax. Eh? And almost use that rocking to put me to sleep. And the thing for me is I wanted to learn mm. how can I use that same approach to turbulence when I'm flying in my life? Wow. So those are some of the lessons I would like to share with you today about mm. how you can expect turbulence. It just happens. It comes out of nowhere. But how you can go through it with a mindset mm. and emotions that enable you to use it for your growth. So first point I've heard you say is that Turbulence is not over. No. We should expect some turbulence in this year. That's part of our new normal. Mm. Huh? Mm. Uncertainty, mm. unpredictability. You know one word you've kept hearing on your programs for the last two years has been this VUCA world. VUCA world. VUCA world, volatile, mm. uncertain, um, complex and ambiguous. Mm. That is the reality mm. we need to almost gird our loins for for 2022 and beyond. Why focus on emotions? Okay. Couple of things. Um, you know, I've been really excited to see some of the work coming out around emotional intelligence over mm -hmm. the past couple of years, but I realize we need to go further. Hmm? Okay. I'm finding that we can no longer leave the mm. world of emotions, psychologists, counselors, therapists, because what I have seen is your ability Mm -hmm. to go through the zone of turbulence will, de be, will be dependent on your skills, okay. knowledge, and attitudes around emotions. Mm -hmm. So it becomes so key. Emotions matter. Emotions determine how you deal with a crisis. Emotions determine how productive you are. Emotions determine how creative you are when all of a sudden your business hits a roadblock and you just need to think of innovative ways around it. So emotions matter in terms of us being able to navigate this new normal. Mm. So emotions matter and they determine the skills, attitudes and uh, 
the knowledge that you need in reaction to the key challenges. Okay, so we should continue. We should expect more turbulence, but it's not all bad news. Yes, that it's, it's not all bad. It's not all bad news. news. It's not all bad news. I think, and this is my first message, and this is the good news, is, mm -hmm. is that even as we expect mm -hmm. Hmm, that there may be some turbulence huh, along our path, along our journey, we can grow through okay. whatever we're going to go through. Like that. Hmm? We can grow through whatever, whatever we're, going we're going to, to go, go through. through huh? okay. But that doesn't happen automatically. Okay. Hmm? Just growth does not happen automatically. Using turbulence, challenges, mm. difficulties mm. as an opportunity for growth doesn't happen automatically. Okay. It is dependent on your ability to intentionally work on your own growth to okay. work on your emotions, to work on your mindset, mm. and really to put into practice many of the strategies I think many of your listeners mm -hmm. and your viewers will be hearing through this Effective Living series. Mm. So that's the good news. You can grow through whatever you are going through. Mm. And the strategies will be focused on emotional resilience, right, yes. or emotional intelligence. Yes. So you'll be sharing strategies on how to be emotionally resilient. That's it. Huh? Mm. So as I said, so to me, I think we need to take the whole conversation about emotional intelligence up a notch. Huh? Okay. To this thing about emotional resilience, this okay. ability to bounce back emotionally mm -hmm. when you're going through turbulence, but also, as you said, the theme of this Effective Living series, to be able to build back. Huh? Mm -hmm. to build back stronger. It's your emotional resilience that will enable you to do that. Huh? So do you have a working definition for emotional resilience? Yes, it, it is indeed the ability mm -hmm. to bounce back mm -hmm. and forward. In fact, many okay. times you're bouncing forward because sometimes we can't go back. We mm. simply can't go back. Some of the things many of us have gone through, we cannot be the same as mm. we were before. Mm. So it's about bouncing forward I like that. emotionally. Bounce back forward yes. emotionally. Yes, yes. Mm. So I like to say bounce forward. Bounce forward. Bounce forward. No, not bounce back. Don't bounce go forward. back. It's about how do you go through. Mm. Again, it's back to how do you grow through whatever you're going through so that you're stronger. I like that. Yeah. How do you grow through whatever you're going through? How do you so bounce yes. forward? Yes. These are two words we'll not forget. Yes. can put them on the screen. Mm -hmm. Grow through what you go through. That's it. Bounce forward. So That's how it. many strategies can you give me? on developing emotional resilience so this year. So there's five of them. Five huh? strategies. So that's five. Are you ready for it? Yes. Huh? All right. Okay. Five strategies for developing emotional yes. resilience. Okay. Number one. Deepen your self-awareness. Mm. Bernard, mm. self-awareness will be your superpower in 2022. Wow. Self-awareness will be your superpower in 2022 mm -hmm. because it means if you intend to grow and thrive as a person in mm -hmm. 2022, number one, it would be impossible without self-awareness. Number two, self-awareness will almost act as your booster. You know, nowadays we're talking about boosters to immunize you mm -hmm. when the turbulence occurs. Mm -hmm. But third, self-awareness will also give you the edge and leverage to grow. Huh? Interesting. So, and some people might be wondering, okay, Taka, what are you talking about when you say self-awareness? Huh? Mm -hmm. Self-awareness is the ability to observe yourself in the moment. Mm. Many times people will say, oh, me, I know myself, or uh -huh. I like this, I like this, and that, that's, mm. we're talking about more than that. We're like in the moment mm. to almost be able to get on the balcony mm. and watch a situation and can see, oh, so-and-so has said this, or this, and thing, this thing has occurred. Mm -hmm. I am now, I can feel this emotion raging in me. I can feel myself getting Getting very anxious mm. and a result of the anxiety I am getting and behaving this particular way now why is self-awareness so important it gives you choice Wow that's the whole thing Wow it gives you a choice as to whether you will simply react or respond to a mm. particular situation mm. Eh? Mm. and the reality for many of us is that the turbulence is so hard emotionally. The challenges that so many of us have gone through has been so hard because we feel we have no control. Things are being done to us. So anything that feels that is giving you back agency, okay. it's giving you the power in terms of how you navigate is very powerful. This is why self-awareness is so powerful. It gives you that agency in terms of how you respond. Huh? Mm. 
Mm. Very practically, okay. self-awareness happens. Again, something happens. It's triggered. You're dealt with a crisis. You've been given a diagnosis. How does self-awareness happen in that moment? You take a sacred pause. Mm. What I mean, you breathe. Okay. You stop. So anything you can find to almost decrease the intensity of the emotion. I like that. Anything you can do, because sometimes these emotions overwhelm us. We're so angry, we could scream. We're so depressed, we're left mm. without words. We're immobilized. Huh? So it's figuring out what is it I need to do to Turn, turn it down, the volume down, a the bit. volume down, the intensity, so I can choose. Remember, this is about the choice. Mm. About this is why it's your superpower. So that strategy. Number that's an one. interesting point because I remember there was a day somebody, maybe somebody in the downline, makes a big mistake, yeah. and you was and it, you are so angry, and the first thing you want to do is to call them and just blast them. That's it. But I guess from what you're saying, you know yourself that you want to vent, <laughs> so you say, okay, you know what, Aloski, I know you are angry. So breathe yeah. before I pick up the phone, breathe, yeah. because yeah. when I breathe, now I can choose that when I do pick up the phone mm -hmm. to correct him, to say, look, you made this error. Let's mm -hmm. see how to do it differently next time. You're doing it in the way that he's more likely to learn okay. rather than feel so ashamed by how you have spoken to him. So, so that's, that's responding instead of reacting. Yes. So that's Giving number one. Deepen your self-awareness. That's going to be your superpower. Yeah. The second strategy is to name and own your emotions. Eh? Name and own your emotions. Yes. Now, okay. the sad truth, Bernard, mm -hmm. is most of us are emotionally illiterate. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> we either don't know what we're feeling mm -hmm. or we, we don't have the words to describe what we're feeling. So I'm going to put you on the spot now, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna invite you to, to name five emotions you felt over the last two days? Um, disappointment. Mm -hmm. My team didn't win. <laughs> so disappointed. Uh, ambivalence. Mm -hmm. uh, something I just didn't care about. Mm -hmm. Anger mm -hmm. over, over something. Happiness. Okay. Uh, wife and kids make me happy. Uh, what else? I don't know. Those are uh, four out of five. It's not bad. Not bad. Four. Not bad. I'm 80%. But you see, but, but you see how you have to like you have to think of the words because it's not something we're taught. It's not something we're yeah, taught at school. True. We don't. You know, this is not something we often pick up around the way. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now, now, why is it so important to be able to name mm -hmm. these words and increase your emotional vocabulary? Eh? Okay. It's not just about being clever. Hmm? It's because by naming what you feel, mm -hmm. you are able to get on the balcony. Okay. You get that distance from it. You mm. turn down the volume, the intensity. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, a psychologist, Dancy Girl, said, you name it to tame it. Oh, not name it to claim it. No. <laughs> <laughs> because me, my church, we never claim. You never claim. <laughs> this, this time we're you are naming, naming to it tame. to taming it. Eh? Because the whole idea oh, is, is to manage your emotions, not All your right. emotions manage you. Okay. Eh? Mm. By naming it, mm -hmm. you're also not pretending. Mm. It doesn't exist because okay. I think this is the other challenge we're finding. And that's also going to what will get us in the way, what will get in the way of us building back stronger. Some of us, we have PhDs at numbing our emotions. What do Ooh. I mean by that? I mean, we do everything in our power to mm. avoid feeling mm. what is present. So we overwork. We over Netflix, mm. we drink too much, we, do th we criticize others too much, we become perfectionists. All of those sometimes are symbols of avoiding feeling a particular thing. Huh? So this is the importance about naming it and owning it. Owning it is saying, you know what, right now I'm really, as you said, disappointed. Right now I'm really hurt. Mm. Right now I'm really envious. Mm. Hmm? It's mm. about owning those emotions because you can't change that which you don't own. So those are two important things. Huh? I like that. It's also about ensuring that you are not, with numbing, what happens is people are suppressing mm. so many emotions. So I call you Bernard. Mm. You've had a rough year. Yeah. Huh? Oh, Bernard, how are you doing? Oh, I'm cool, cool, I'm cool. Oh, we're there, oh, you know. Everything <laughs> is okay. When inside... I'm dying. You are dying. Every bone in your body is telling you, yeah. 
people, I'm hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what happens when you constantly suppress emotions, Bernard, is either they erupt, mm. uh, and often the victims of those eruptions are those who are most vulnerable in oh. your life. You know yeah. how it is. Eh? You're not yeah. going to erupt with your boss. No. You're going to erupt with the kids. You're mm. going to erupt with the most junior in your, in your office. Eh? So it's either eruption or expression of the emotion in, 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 in inappropriate ways, or it comes out in your body. Mm. Mm? So it produces chemicals? Well, often they say, I was watching an amazing show, a um, documentary on healing, and they often talk about many disease is a reflection of unprocessed emotions. Is it? Yeah. Wow. So often when you start to look at illness, you start to sometimes look back, not just at nutrition or whatever else mm. happening with DNA, mm. but also you start to look at what are emotions, what, mm. is, what is there that has not been let go in wow. an appropriate way. Yeah? Wow. So this is why it's important to own it. Now, what I'm not saying, Bernard, and get me very clear, mm -hmm. is that everybody should go about expressing their emotions <laughs> wantonly. Huh? That's not what we're saying here. Huh? Okay. It's simply being honest huh? with the self-awareness. You know something is present. Mm -hmm. It's been honest about naming it so you mm -hmm. have some distance mm -hmm. and then deciding how you want to manage that. So Fantastic. that's number two. All right. This Name is effectively being serious. My guest is Taka Awari. We're talking about emotional resilience in 2022 and she's given us some very key messages we can grow through to go through and we need to develop emotional resilience we are on the five of her strategies to increase emotional resilience the first one deepen your self-awareness where you create a gap or window between you and the emotion gives you choice and then you have the chance to turn down the volume on your emotion. Mm -hmm. Number two, you must be emotionally literate. Most of us are emotionally illiterate. You can't <laughs> name emotions. Name it to tame it. Don't just numb the emotion. But that doesn't mean you should just go about expressing your emotions wantonly. What is number three? Okay. Number three is a word of caution. Beware of certain emotions. Okay. Huh? Okay. There are a number of emotions that, from my work over mm. the years as a coach, mm. I have found to be particularly pernicious. And I, mm. when I mean pernicious, I mean they're harmful, really harmful, but in a subtle way. Okay. Sometimes you don't see it. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so there are about four of them that I've seen that are quite common. I can't help but ask you. Can you guess? Uh, resentment. Ah, interesting. Oh, yeah. Maybe like bitterness, yeah. I'm not sure, resentment, yes. Yes. sort of thing. Yes, yes. Okay, I like that one yeah. because it was not on my list. Oh, okay. But I have seen bitterness eat people from mm -hmm. the inside, uh, which mm -hmm. has made it particularly pernicious. Uh? Mm -hmm. But the ones I have seen mm -hmm. that have been quite harmful, one, and I'll tell you why, mm -hmm. is number one is insecurity. Oh, okay. This shows up as a lack of confidence, indifference, lack of engagement. Mm. In, in the passive side, that's what it shows up. But as someone who works with leaders as well, the mm. way I see this showing up is controlling behavior, mm -hmm. authoritarianism, um, um, almost trying to control people, micromanagement. That's also how I sh see it showing up. But generally, I also see insecurity showing up as kind of this rampant consumerism. I must buy all kinds of things to constantly show I am worthy. Eh? Mm. Or sometimes even corruption, eh? mm. where I absolutely have no limits in terms wow. of my values. Because my insecurity, I'm constantly trying to prove I'm worthy. Eh? So this is why, beware. If insecurity shows up, pay attention to it to make sure So it's like it. a primary emotion that leads to other negative yes, emotions. Yes, yes. Wow. So insecurity is one. Never because fear is so much there. Huh? Never thought about that. That's one. The other one I've seen, Bernard, mm. is entitlement. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I feel like two opposites. <laughs> yes. Insecurity, entitlement. Yes. yes. Oh, I like that. So what I've wow. seen with entitlement and why it's also so pernicious is what I've seen is an insistence on mm. what others must do for you. Mm. And as a result, it's almost like um, a complete lack of accountability, okay. a lack of responsibility, because you feel it's not about you. It's what others must give me. Mm. It's not what I must do to get what I would particularly want. Wow. So be careful of that other one as well. Mm. Huh? Mm. And I'll go through the other two very quickly. The mm. other one is shame. Shame. Now I bring about, I, I, I notice and I an underline shame because on this continent, we have many shaming things we do. We shame people a lot. 
Now, if people want to understand what I mean by shame, the, the person who's done so much work on shame is, uh, is Brene Brown, uh, the okay. author. And this is what she talks when she defines shame. She says, it's that intensely painful experience mm -hmm. of feeling or believing that we are flawed mm. or therefore unworthy of love wow. and belonging. Mm. The focus is on self, not the behavior. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is why shame is particularly pernicious, because somehow you feel you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. So you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Somehow you've not hit your target. Somehow you're not living up to the being that mother, father, sister, daughter you want to be. But instead of realizing, OK, maybe I didn't do these things differently in 2021. In 2022, I'll do it. Instead, you think there's something wrong with me. I'm just the worst father. Yeah. I'm just the worst, you know, mm. um, employee. Yeah? Yeah. So shame is particularly pernicious. And the last one is anger. Mm, of course. Mm? Of course. Now, now, anger, I think, is quite harmful because we, all ha we have all kinds of cultural norms about yeah. anger, yeah. about who is allowed to be angry mm. and who is not allowed to be angry. And as a result, either you see very, as I mentioned before, inappropriate expressions of anger mm -hmm. Or you find, this is related to your bitterness, mm -hmm. anger eating people up yeah. because culturally they are not allowed to express that anger. So with those four emotions, and there are others, but I highlight these four just the same way a doctor would say if you're not well, they're like, okay, go home and rest. But if these symptoms happen, call me. I get that. So what I'm saying here is that if you start to mm. notice with self-awareness these particular emotions, pay attention, pause, because the impact can be quite hard, not just on you personally, but those around you. Amazing stuff. Yeah? So be aware of these emotions. Let's yeah? go to lesson uh, four. Four. All yes. right. Uh, so lesson four mm -hmm. is about looking for the lesson Mm -hmm. for your growth okay yeah as i mentioned uh, this is not just about girding our loins and saying okay i'm gonna get through whatever turbulence it's actually saying mm. you know what i'm going to look for the opportunity for growth okay mm -hmm. so we imagine that rather than suppressing difficult emotions rather than looking at them with much judgment and saying oh i should never have been angry i should never what if bernard you looked at these difficult emotions with curiosity okay mm -hmm. what if you adopted the mindset that even the most difficult emotions have something to teach me okay. about my growth okay. let me give concrete examples huh? mm -hmm. so for instance anger has taught me mm -hmm. that at those moments I may potentially need to get better at managing boundaries. True. Huh? So maybe I'm angry because somebody has said something to yeah. me or somebody has done something to me and I should have it before clarified my expectations and I didn't. Huh? So that anger has taught me that. Another one, resentment. Hmm? Resentment, when it shows up, may mean I need to have a tough conversation with somebody. Maybe I'm resentful that I'm doing all this thing and you are just chilling. You are not doing it. So maybe I need to have a tough conversation about why am I doing this and you're not doing this. Let's talk about what's going on. Huh? Um, envy. That's another tough emotion. Maybe envy may teach me that there is something I want that you have that I'm not owning I need it. So instead of looking at you with green eyes, maybe I need to say, okay, Taka, so how can you focus on getting that thing? Mm -hmm. Because clearly you want it. Huh? Clearly. But you can see that's a complete shift in mindset. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. What can anxiety teach you? Maybe anxiety is teaching you that the way you're looking at that particular situation, you're focusing on only what could go wrong, not what could go well. Huh? So that really is the fourth strategy. When these emotions show up, when you've applied self-awareness, mm -hmm. Look at the emotions with curiosity to learn from Lessons them. for growth. Lessons for your As you said, growth. grow through. So you can As you grow through. through Amazing. Yeah? What's the final strategy? And the final one, I'll start with a very short story. It's a okay. Native American mm -hmm. um, story that I'm sure you've heard before, but for many of your listeners, mm -hmm. it'd be good to hear it again. Huh? It's, mm -hmm. And this is, the, this is how it goes. An old Cherokee Indian chief mm -hmm. was teaching his grandson about life, and he said, a fight is going on inside me, he told the young boy. A fight between two wolves. Mm. 
the dark one is evil, his <laughs> envy, his greed, his arrogance and self-pity. Mm. But there is also the light wolf, which is good. Mm. His joy, peace, love, hope, serenity. Mm. The same fight is going on within you, grandson, mm. and inside every other person on this earth. Okay. The grandson ponders this at the moment and then asks, Grandfather, which one will win? The old Cherokee smiled and said, The one you feed. Wow. Mm? I like that. So my fifth and final strategy mm. is to decide which emotions to feed. Huh? Decide so which emotion to which feed. Emotion, which wolf you will feed. That is it. Huh? Because uh, emotions are fed by beliefs and mindsets. Huh? Yes. So you will be hearing over the course of effective living all the kinds of mindsets that will feed positive emotions. So be choiceful about which emotions to feed by choosing the emotions. Amazing. This so is, that's it. This is amazing. So yeah. let's just summarize the five on sure. the screen. Deepen your self-awareness. Yes. Name and own your emotions. Beware of certain emotions, yes. and those were quite key for me. Yeah. Insecurity, uh, entitlement, shame, and anger. Yes. I remember those four. Yes. Look out for lessons for growth because you grow through to go through. Yes. And then decide on which of the wolves to feed. Yes. Uh, this is really a lot to go through. Um, further help. So what, what can Busara do for a person? Maybe I, I want to be on the C-suite leadership and I feel my, my limitation is my emotional side. Okay, I'm very good at my job, but I just can't get along with other members on, of, of the board. Do you have any programs for people like me? Do you have yes. programs for companies? Yes, and yes, stuff we like do. This? What I'm inviting people to do is visit our website. Okay. We have both online programs. Mm -hmm. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. We have tailor-made face-to-face programs where we combine both workshops and coaching mm -hmm. that really help develop your unique leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And the way we do it, Bernard, we don't do one-offs mm -hmm. huh? because we recognize that changing your mindset, chase, changing your leadership practice doesn't happen overnight. Huh? Okay. So one of the things we do is we'll accompany you through that process. So please do visit our website okay. at Busara. Mm -hmm. Africa mm -hmm. dot com, mm -hmm. but also connect with me on LinkedIn. So okay. Basara dot Africa dot com. Connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. Taka Wari, you mm -hmm. know, send me a message. Let me know what your specific challenges are so I can get in touch with you. And if you're one of those Facebook people, my daughter said, Mommy, why do old people like Facebook? I said, ah, ah. So if you're <laughs> one of those old people who like Facebook, do connect with us on Basara at the Basara Africa page. We have lots of exciting programs. When is the book coming out again? So first quarter. And the book is on what? It's really called Leadership in Africa Redefined. Leadership in Africa Redefined. So, it's about changing the narrative of leadership in Africa. Mm. The narrative has always been these terrible leaders, mm. these corrupt autocratic mm. leaders, when the reality is actually that's only part of the picture. Wow. The other part of the picture is these amazing leaders who are making a difference, such as Bernard Avle. I mean, that book, yes. amazing. And amazing. so what I've done is I mm. have interviewed 30 leaders from across the continent mm. and taken out, distilled very concrete strategies mm. that others can use mm. to strengthen leadership, not in New York, not in London, but right here in Accra, in Joburg, in Lusaka, wow. on this continent. I'm looking forward to that book. When yes. it comes, I'll invite you back on air. Yay. And hopefully we can get copies on Amazon and yes, booknook.store and other yes. beautiful places like that. So thank you very much, Ataka Awori. That's all we have time for for today's edition. In fact, this is the first in the series for the month. As we said, it's in four weeks. First week is on rebuilding personally, resetting the mind. And Taka has helped us with mastering emotional resilience as the foundation for this. We'll be expecting people like Patrick Otekubuedu, Mami Gezi, Michael Ohini, if I had to 